Hello and welcome to the 146th Spring Commencement Ceremony of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. My name is John Coker. As Provost and Vice Chancellor, I am pleased to extend an especially warm welcome to all of you. This academic year, UWO continues its commitment to create a stronger campus culture for diversity and inclusion. One of these priorities is to continue to build relationships with American Indian communities. Our development of a land acknowledgement statement is an important step to connect us to the history of the place in which we all learn, live, and work. Today we recognize and honor indigenous peoples as traditional stewards of this land. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Alicia Obermeyer, a member of the Lakota Nation of Wisconsin who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Science. Please help me welcome Alicia in the reading of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh Land Acknowledgement Statement. Hello, 2020 graduates. My name is Alicia Obermeyer. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Hakote Akata Shikuzi of the Lakota people. Today I'm here to do the land acknowledgement. So as we begin our commencement, we acknowledge the original inhabitants of this area, the Menominee and the Ho-Chunk Nations. This land encompasses the three campuses of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh in the Lake Winnebago region. Specifically, we acknowledge the 12 nations of Wisconsin. Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, Brothertown Nation, Forest County Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk Nation, La Corte Roles Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, Lac de Flambeau Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, Menominee Nation, Stockbridge Muncie Band of the Mohawken Nation, Oneida Nation, Red Cliff Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, Sokogan Chippewa Community, and St. Croix Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, which are also known as the Ojibwe people. Please take a moment to honor these ancestral grounds and celebrate the resilience and strength that all Indigenous people have shown worldwide. Please also remember that many Native people are suffering due to lack of resources during this pandemic. Thank you, Alicia, and congratulations on your achievement. Today's ceremony commencements commences with the academic processional. We welcome doctoral candidates from the College of Education and Human Services and College of Nursing, master's degree candidates, associate degree candidates who completed their degree on UW Oshkosh, Fond du Lac, and Fox Cities campuses, candidates from the Division of Online and Continuing Education, candidates from the College of Business, candidates from the College of Education and Human Services, candidates from the College of Letters and Science, and candidates from the College of Nursing. Candidates for graduation, faculty, staff, parents, family members, and friends, I hereby convene the 146th Spring Commencement Ceremony of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. Performing the National Anthem today is Michaela Marks, who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Arts. As we begin today's ceremony, we pay honor and tribute to a number of UW Oshkosh students who have served our country or are preparing for active service. I ask that our veteran and active military graduating students please stand. In addition, we recognize the service of all current active military personnel and veterans with us today. Please stand and be recognized for your service to our country. Now, will everyone please rise for the national anthem? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars
Thank you, Michaela. Please be seated. Members of the platform party are listed in the program. Before we move on to our ceremony, I would like to take a moment to introduce these individuals. Our UW Oshkosh Chancellor, Dr. Andrew J. Levitt. Assistant Chancellor for Access Campuses, Dr. Martin Rudd. Land Acknowledgement, Alicia Obermeyer. Our faculty speakers, Stuart Cole and Jim Ransom. Our graduating class speakers, Ali Chard, Alexandra Fisher. Alumni Association President, Amanda Betts. Oshkosh Student Association Representative, Jacob Banfield. Faculty Senate Representative, Dr. Drusilla Scribner. Senate of Academic Staff Representative, Melanie Marine. University Staff Representative, Lisa Getch. Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration, James Fletcher. Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, Dr. Cheryl Green. Associate Vice Chancellor for Curricular Affairs and Student Academic Achievement, Charles Hill. Dean of the College of Business, Dr. Barbara Rao. Dean of the College of Education and Human Services, Dr. Linda Haling. Dean of the Honors College, Dr. Lawrence Carlin. Dean of the College of Letters and Science, Dr. Colleen McDermott. Dean of the College of Nursing, Dr. Judith Westfall. Director of Graduate Services, Greg Wipazinski. Registrar of the University, Lisa Danielson. Thank you all for your support as we celebrate the achievements of our graduates today. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the Chancellor of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, Dr. Andrew J. Levitt. Graduates, parents, family, friends, and honored guests, welcome to this virtual commencement ceremony. On behalf of the University of Wisconsin system and the faculty and staff of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, I extend greetings and congratulations to our graduates and a special warm welcome to all who join us today to celebrate. Graduates, this is a day in your life you will never forget. Parents and families, neither will you. None of us would have imagined a few months ago that we would be here today meeting through a virtual world to mark this occasion. Our world has changed, but we are here to celebrate your achievements. You all worked so very hard to get here today. The pursuit of a university degree is a challenge. It tests our in limits. It takes time, focus, and perseverance. And you have achieved it. I am proud of you. UW Oshkosh is proud of you. And it's all of you who make this time of year so remarkable. There are celebrations of achievement every day at UW Oshkosh, and today is the pinnacle. We recognize that many of you are joining us from hundreds across hundreds, maybe thousands of miles throughout the country, taking a moment to mark an important moment in your family's histories. Today, we honor and celebrate you. We recognize and salute the commitment, the investment, and the energy you have poured into your personal and family transformations. You are stronger, more resilient, and better prepared to face the future and to shape it. So today, graduates, be proud and celebrate your success and get ready to show the world what titans are made of. Representing the graduating class are Ali Chard and Alex Fisher. Ali Chard from Madison uh, has double majored in human resources and Spanish and graduates with a bachelor's of business administration and a bachelor of arts in degree. Chard credits the four months she spent abroad in, in Spain for broadening her friendships and igniting a desire to explore cultures beyond the US. Outside the classroom, she served as treasurer for the UWO chapter of the Society of Human Resources Management and worked as a Gold Core, Titan Gold Core campus ambassador, giving tours to prospective students and their families. Chard recently earned her Teach English as a Foreign Language Certificate and will be volunteering uh, at the Winnebago County Literacy Center in Oshkosh as an English tutor. After graduation, she is hoping to be a part of the Fulbright, Fulbright Cultural Exchange Program to continue developing her intercultural competency while working in Spain. Alexandra Fisher of Franklin is a communication studies major. Fisher focused her studies and activities on developing leadership skills, hoping to make a difference in people's lives. Outside of the classroom, she was named Mentor of the Month by the Boys and Girls Club of Oshkosh and spent time as 
the UW Oshkosh Women's Lacrosse Club team president and men's lacrosse club team manager. Her dedication to women's team, uh, to the women's team, earned her the MVP award and a top three mention among all UWO club sports. Fisher's involvement on and off campus has helped build a better community. Fisher is proud to be passing on her grandmother's advice, don't wish your life away, and to her fellow graduates. Following graduation, Fisher plans to uh, continue at the Boys and Girls Club of Oshkosh as their organization's development and marketing coordinator. Now, please join me in welcoming our class speakers, Allie Chard and Alex Fisher. Students, parents, siblings, extended family, friends, faculty, staff, and fellow graduates, welcome. Today marks an important day in our journey. It reflects the late nights, the heavy credit loads, the delicate balance between work, school, and a social life. It signifies the beginning of a life post-graduation. However, it looks different than many of us anticipated. Rather than standing in a room surrounded by our peers, we're cheering each other on from afar. Despite the distance, it does not diminish our accomplishment. We earned this day. We each took unique paths to arrive here today. Some of us are graduate students receiving an MBA. Others are transfer students, adult learners, or those that received an online education. Some of us took the traditional four years, others five, and some, well, what matters is we made it. However you got here today, congratulations on a job well done. Our college education unites us and draws a connecting line between us and others. It has taught us the importance of thinking critically, welcoming diverse perspectives, and striving for inclusivity in all facets of life. This evolution is a reflection of our gift as individuals to continuously grow and change. I think back to my freshman year. For someone with indecision as her trademark, college felt daunting. At UW Oshkosh, there are 67 majors, 40 minors, and 63 certificates and emphases. I was overwhelmed by the options and so terrified to make the wrong decision that it took me three years to make any decision at all. Analysis paralysis at its finest. I can't possibly be the only one that has ever experienced this crossroad. At the beginning of college, we are asked to answer the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Honestly, when it comes to a career, I'm still not sure. Many people around us are still figuring it out themselves. However, what I have learned after changing my major four times over the course of five years is that who you want to be is far more important than what you want to do. Consider yourself. The person you were on the first day of school is drastically different than the one receiving a diploma today. Let's give ourselves permission to be a work in progress. We are allowed to dabble. We can pick up a new hobby just to put it right back down. We can pilot a new career path and make U-turns at any time. No one has it all figured out. Literally no one. We are not the exception. Our paths up until this point have been relatively linear. We progress from elementary school to junior high, later transitioning to high school, and finally making the leap to college. Now, our paths diverge. Some of us will go on to pursue a career. Others may take time to travel, volunteer, or apply to graduate school. Regardless of your chosen next step, we must not lose sight of our shared humanity. It is not enough that we look admiringly at the education obtained throughout our college career. We must commit to carrying this knowledge with us and applying what we've learned in our workplaces, neighborhoods, churches, and homes. If we want inviting offices, we must be inviting. If we desire kind schools, we need to exude kindness. If we hope for more informed future generations, we should encourage exploration and the freedom to ask questions. This is what our college education has taught us. We must create the world we want to live in. Let us seek to do life with people that do not look, speak, vote, believe, or act the same as we do. We are better, not despite our differences, but because of them. So, class of 2020, I ask, who do you want to be when you grow up? I hope you're perplexed. I hope you're unsure. And I hope you spend the rest of your life constantly revising your answer. 
I am humbled to stand with you today and proud to have this shared experience that forever bonds us. Although our graduation day is not the one we expected, I hope we can each find some small way to retain its meaning. I am choosing to believe that the future is full of opportunity. Stay curious, color outside all the lines. Together, we'll create the world we want to live in. Thank you. Hello, fellow graduates. My name is Alex Fisher, and I am proud to be one of your commencement speakers today. My grandmother, while I was growing up, held the responsibility of making sure that my siblings and I made it off to school each morning. I spent most of these mornings telling her about exciting events that were coming up in my life. My grandmother, however, didn't share that same excitement with me. She always responded, Alex, don't wish your life away. This response frustrated me. Why not wish for the good days to come sooner? But it's today, standing in front of you, that I realized that my grandmother was right. You shouldn't wish your life away. How many minutes did you spend in class wishing it would be over? How many hours have you spent dreaming about the weekend? How many days have you spent with the Sunday scaries? I can't tell you how many minutes, hours, or days we've collectively spent thinking about the end, more or less hoping that it would come sooner. But I can tell you that my grandmother was right. You shouldn't wish your life away. Today, I want to leave you with three pieces of advice that I believe are fundamental in not wishing your life away and why it's so important. First, don't wish for your journey to be easier. I have always struggled in academics but my freshman year of college was anything but easy. It felt like the last straw for me when I was diagnosed with a learning disability. This challenge made me question if I had it in me to achieve my goals. We have all had moments that made us doubt ourselves, moments that made the journey a lot more difficult, moments that it would have been easy for us to call it quits. But in these moments of despair, we realized what we were capable of. You see, these challenges are necessary in order to show you how resilient you really are. Second, don't wish for your journey not to happen. A year ago, fear was staring me in the face. It was the night before I left for alternative break to do hurricane recovery work with 10 other strangers. I was literally sick to my stomach the night before thinking about getting on that plane. But if I had made a decision that night not to go based on my fears, I would not be the person I am today. The work I did there taught me an important life lesson. How important it is to help your neighbor, whether they are next door or a whole ocean away. Think about these times that you almost let fear take control of your life and how your life is different because of that. You see, these moments of fear are necessary in order for us to grow into who we are meant to be. Third, don't wish for your journey to be over. Think about all the times you really wanted this college experience to be over. Maybe it was when you were spending hours in the library or battling bank accounts that didn't always agree with that impulsive grocery shopping when you were stacking up full-time credits while having a job and trying to maintain a social life, when you lost one too many student IDs or got yet another parking ticket, or maybe it was when we were fighting off the worst hangovers of our lives. Either way, we spent most of this time wishing it would be over, but now they are moments we wish we could have back because they are moments that we realized that they would make us appreciate the triumphs so much more. My grandmother was right. Don't wish your life away, Titans, because soon you'll be wishing for more time. This hit home for me when this pandemic started. As classes went virtual and businesses shut down, I began wishing I had more time. I wish we all took it in a little bit more. I wish we could hold on to some of those college experiences a little bit longer. I wish we could sit in that classroom one last time. This pandemic is a reminder to all of us to take each moment in because you never know how quickly it can all change. These moments, the good, the bad, and the ugly 
are moments that we proved we could rise to the occasion. They are moments that show that are a testament to who we are and what we are capable of. Our Titan community took this opportunity to reshape how our campuses function and find new ways for us to come together because we are part of a community that when the going gets tough, we get tougher. I hope you carry this Titan tradition with you as you start the next part of your journey. So going forward, Titans, don't wish for your journey to be easier. Don't wish for it not to happen and don't wish for it to be over. Appreciate every moment that you are given and all that lies ahead of you. And as you now embark on the next part of your journey, I wish you wonderful lives. I wish you growth. I wish you to make your mark. I wish you resilience and I wish you so many triumphs. But most importantly, I wish you to take each moment of the journey in. This is your life, Titans. Don't wish it away. Congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. Thank you for your messages, Alex and Allie. At this time, I'd like to introduce our faculty commencement speakers, Dr. Stuart Cole and lecturer Jim Ransom. Stuart Cole is an associate professor in the English department and the environmental studies program, where he teaches courses in modern and contemporary literature, literary criticism, creative writing, and the environmental humanities. He also teaches interdisciplinary courses in the core curriculum of the Honors College, co-leads two annual study abroad programs, one in Ireland for the University Studies Program and one in London and Paris for Honors, and is, and is an affiliate member of the Sustainability Institute for Regional Transformation, Transformations, or CERT. His academic research, which examines representations of animals in modern British and Irish literature from an eco-critical perspective, has been published in many peer-reviewed journals. He currently is completing two scholarly books. He is a poet and the author of two full-length poetry collections, the most recent being Soft Power, published in 2019. Born and raised and educated in Canada and a proud first-generation college student, he received his PhD in English, in English from the University of Toronto in 2012 and has taught at UW Oshkosh since the fall of 2013. In 2016, he was awarded the he was one of the recipients of the Edward M. Penson Award, recognizing faculty members who have made significant contributions to their colleges and to the university. Jim Ramson's 35-year career spanned finance and advisory service, as well as senior leadership roles in private and public companies. He leveraged his 10 years with Arthur Anderson and Accenture to earn roles at Everbright as executive vice president and later at Menasha, Menasha Corporation as division chief executive officer. He spent the next 15 years at Bemis uh, beginning as a division president and retiring in 2017 as an executive officer and president of Bemis North America. Ransom's foundation at Bemis was built around a servant leadership style, strategic driven agenda and delivering results. He led the creation of growth and product innovation platforms in North and South America, as well as Europe and Bemis's healthcare business. Since his retirement, he has enjoyed his role as an instructor in the Masters of Business Administration program at UW Oshkosh, several CEO coaching assignments, and facilitating selected strategy development engagements. He also has joined several private company boards. Now join me in welcoming our faculty speakers, uh, Dr. Stuart Cole and Mr. Jim Ransom. Hello, everyone. The first thing I'll say to our students, our soon-to-be former students, is congratulations to all of you. Today marks the day that you cross that milestone line separating university student from university graduate. And not only that, but the conditions under which you're watching this ceremony, the fact that I'm talking to a camera, rather than seeing the faces of our graduates and their loved ones in person, as I would ideally like to be doing, attest to your having overcome more than the usual challenges that face seniors on the home stretch to their degree. You have made it through your last semester of college amid the greatest global health crisis in a century. Learning from home, 
kept away from the campus that no doubt came to feel like a second home in recent years. Your work suddenly happening in the virtual spaces of discussion forums and video screens and drop boxes. Your classroom communities fragmented and scattered to the winds seemingly at random. This last loss has affected me as a professor very deeply. The loss of meeting in the classroom and seeing the ideas that emerge as if organically out of the generative dialogue of students and professors who come together in a shared learning community. So much of the knowledge we create seems to depend on being there collectively in that powerful space. I've missed that very much. And I know from speaking with students over the past two months that many of you have too. It would be easy to be negative about these circumstances, especially given that they extend so far into our lives and around the world, bringing economic hardship, uncertainty, fear, and yes, tragedy to so many. I wouldn't normally bring these things up at such a celebratory occasion, but it would be dishonest and even neglectful not to acknowledge them. Because I'm sure that the lives of many of you and your families have been touched in some of these ways. But I'm not here to dwell in negativity. I am here instead to urge you to think about how the adverse circumstance of having a world historic emergency serve as the backdrop of your final semester here at UW Oshkosh marks you out for special significance. The class of 2020 has experienced something that future histories will single out as a turning point in the 21st century. A time when whole societies were forced into social isolation. Their citizens kept apart from one another, from their workplaces, from their places of learning, from all the places where people gather to produce the material of life, not just goods and services, but knowledge and conversation and even something as simple and essential as laughter. Of all the 142 prior classes to graduate at spring commencement in the history of UW Oshkosh, the class of 2020 came through this. You will be able to point to the pages of those future histories and say, not only was I there, but I did the work to graduate from college in the middle of that. That was me. This is the end of my seventh academic year teaching at UWO. And during that time, I've had many conversations with students on the verge of graduation, many of whom expressed the same anxiety. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Many of them have known what they wanted to do, but in the world out there, we can't always get what we want. And that can be scary. Of course, I understand this. It wasn't that long ago that I felt exactly the same way. But there are two things I've come to always say to those students, and I'll say them to you now, because I suspect that many of you need to hear them too. First, it's not a matter of doing something with your life, because you have already been living your life. Indeed, the fact that you're graduating with a degree today is evidence that not only have you been living your life, but you've been living a good life, building a store of knowledge and ideas and relationships and creative, critical problem solving skills that will help you achieve not just material prosperity for yourselves, otherwise known as jobs and money, but real fulfillment. And I say this as a first generation college student who worked some post-graduation jobs ranging from not bad to truly awful before landing in what I now consider to be my dream job. I worked at a bookstore, not bad. I worked as a dishwasher in the kitchen of a very busy restaurant, demoralizing. I fell in the dumpster once at 2 a.m. while cleaning up at the end of my shift. And I worked at a call center for a company that I later learned was defrauding its clients. That's the truly awful one, and it's too long of a story to get into here. 
But even these experiences count as me doing something with my life. Not necessarily what I ideally wanted to be doing, but something without which I very well might not be here today. So graduates, this is your life. It is now, not just off in the distance. Live in it. Learn from it. Don't rush through it on your way to the future. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'll say is this. You are prepared. Much more prepared than you may think you are. By my count, I have taught 34 of you. And let me tell you, it has often struck me how much more prepared you are than I was. I have seen UW Oshkosh students on a mountainside in Ireland, with rain lashing in off the Atlantic Ocean, working together as a community, for a community, for hours, rebuilding stone walls for a local farmer, drenched and laughing. I have seen students enter into creative writing courses, never having written a poem before, and become published authors within a matter of years. Semester after semester, I see students who think, I don't understand this, or say, this just isn't my strong suit. Put in the work and not only understand, but produce brilliant, insightful research. A colleague told me when I interviewed for this job that one thing about UW Oshkosh students is that they are so determinedly modest that they often don't know how smart they are. And one of the best things about teaching them is that you get to witness them realize it, come to own their abilities. Now, modesty is often a virtue. It's certainly better than its opposite. But today is not a day for modesty. Graduates, you need to own how smart you are, how much you've grown, and how prepared you are to cross this milestone line today. This is not to deny that the university does feel like a kind of haven, or that the world beyond the campus walls can seem much less certain. But one of the things you should have learned, especially you, class of 2020, with all you've overcome these recent months, is that certainty is not something we have a right to expect. Nothing is certain. This can make us anxious, of course. And in such times of anxiety, we should often turn to the poets. In this case, the poet John Keats offers one of the great theories of consciousness, a little idea that we should all carry around like a smooth stone or a seashell in our pockets if we want to live better, less anxious lives. This is Keats's idea of negative capability, a forbidding sounding term, but it's really quite simple. Keats elaborated negative capability in a letter to his brothers in December 1817, singling it out as the distinguishing trait of great writers, Shakespeare most of all. He says that negative capability is when a person is, quote, capable of being in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without any irritable grasping after fact or reason, end quote. Now much ink has been spilled in interpreting precisely what Keats means here, but we can say that most basically, to possess negative capability is to be able to dwell in uncertainty without grasping after a certainty that is impossible to attain. In other words, the negative in negative capability designates what we don't know, what we can't control, what we will not ever be sure of. And the capability is the capacity and willingness to accept that, to not allow the fundamental uncertainties of life to render us anxious, to paralyze us, or to lead us grasping after false truths. The world's uncertainties demand negative capability of us now more than ever. And luckily, I know you have it in you, even if you're not sure you do. Think about the most challenging and rewarding problems in your fields of study. Medical problems, market problems, artistic problems, problems of experimental design, of historical evidence, of interpretation. There comes a moment 
in confronting such problems, when you reach the limits of what you can be sure of, when you're faced with a choice whose consequences you can't fully predict, when you just need to choose a direction and see what happens. At the best of times, presto. The treatment works. The stock rises. The composition locks into a harmonious whole. The results accord with the hypothesis. The narrative flows convincingly. Or, less ideally, the opposite happens. And hopefully, you get to try again. In a way, we are all products of the most basic and yet most momentous act of negative capability, one without which none of us would be here. Think of your parents. They had you without knowing anything about what you would become. No one paid them to have you. They didn't say, we want a nurse or an English major or a saxophone player or a math teacher or an expert in supply chain management or we're not having a kid. They couldn't know what you'd become. If they had all grasped after fact and reason, in the face of this uncertainty, as Keats warns us not to do, we wouldn't have a class of 2020. But they didn't. They made the choice in the absence of full knowledge. They faced up to the mystery. And they are being rewarded for it today, as the proud parents of college graduates. So, graduates, you should all probably take a moment to turn to your parents and say, and say, thank you, parents, for exercising negative capability. And parents should turn to grandparents and say the same thing and all the way back through time. OK, did you all do that? What I want to point out to you here is first that many of the best, most life changing and rewarding choices are made in the face of uncertainty. And second, a major part of what your education has prepared you with is the capacity to confront that uncertainty with acceptance and to make genuinely good, successful lives for yourselves in the face of it. To close, I would like to take another turn into the world of literature, this time to the visionary African-American science fiction writer Octavia E. Butler and her novel Parable of the Sower which I studied online this semester with a group of upper year English and environmental studies students. Published in 1993, Butler's novel is set in a California three decades in the future, a world afflicted by global warming, drought, and violent social disintegration. It focuses on a young woman, Lauren Olamina, as she travels up the coast after losing her family, gathering friends along her journey. Lauren's father had been a preacher, and though she is respectful of his Christian teachings, in her extreme circumstances, she comes to feel the need to reconceive of God in terms that fit her terrifying world. She does this reconceiving in small poems, and this is the first of these. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. Faced with a world racked by environmental destruction, racism and rampant patriarchy, the tearing apart of families, and rising poverty and insecurity, Lauren affirms change as the only constant. Lest this sound too hopeless, I should add that later, Lauren adds another poem that attests to humanity's power in such a situation. She writes, God is trickster, teacher, chaos, clay. God exists to be shaped. Lauren's fellow travelers eventually become followers, and the novel ends with the founding of a community called Earthseed, a community rooted in mutual respect and love, a binding promise to help one another, and a shared acceptance both of change as the guiding force of the universe and of our power to shape that change with our choices. 
no matter our faith. We can learn from Butler's vision of a young woman facing a terrifying world, a world much more terrifying than our own, still much brighter world, and forging out of the chaos and destruction around her a vision of togetherness and empowerment and hope. This touches keenly on the key thing I want to affirm for you today. Graduates, you are prepared with the wisdom to accept that change is inevitable and with the skills and capacities to adapt and flourish in the face of change. You are negatively, beautifully capable. You also have a community here. I know I can speak for my fellow faculty when I say that the fact that you are graduating only means that now you are alumni. We care about you and your success. Please don't think of UWO as behind you, but rather as at the foundation of your future. Please don't hesitate to be in touch. We are here to support you and to celebrate you. And we, your professors, want to hear from you. But that is the future. In the here and now, the most important thing is that you enjoy this day. You have earned it. Before I get started here, I graduated 37 years ago, and you might wonder why would the university pick somebody as old as me to chat with you today? Well, I prepared for this. So I uh, watched 20 hours of TikTok. I listened to 13 hours of The Tiger King. I'm having Carol Baskin flashbacks, all you cool cats and kittens. And I've had two Bud Lights for every day that I've been in court. Well, three Bud Lights for every day I've been in quarantine. And my daughter cut my hair. I am prepared. But on a serious note, congratulations to all of you. This is a wonderful opportunity, even though we need to do it in this virtual format. It doesn't take anything away from what a great experience this should be. I'm really proud and I congratulate all of you. And it isn't the end of anything, really. It's just the beginning of a lifelong learning experience, a lifelong opportunity to explore, and a lifelong adventure. It's a real journey. And I know it's a little chaotic right now, right? You're probably anxious. I would turn that energy into being curious, not anxious. The world is changing, obviously. But with that change comes opportunity. And if I think of some of the big, huge industries that are going to shift, think of healthcare and what telemedicine is going to do to that changing environment. Think of the investment into the sciences, probably more than at any point in my lifetime. I think about the world of education, which I'm now partially uh, working in, and we're going to learn and teach differently than we ever have before. And obviously the business community is, is a bit flipped upside down, but the last time we went through a crisis, not as bad as this, but back in 08, companies emerged prior to that you never have heard of. Hulu and Netflix and Amazon and Venmo, and Uber, and I could keep going on. That's going to happen again. Supply chains that took 20 years, 30 years to build are going to get upended. All of that is going to be an opportunity, an opportunity for you to be curious, an opportunity for you to explore your adventure. And how can I help you think through that? What are the kinds of things you might want to keep in mind as you go through this adventure? First and foremost, think about your dream job in the dream company in the dream city. It might be two weeks, two months, several, you know, who knows how far away. What are you going to do with your time between now and then? That's an incredible question I think employers are going to ask. You can differentiate by just what you do over the next two, three, four months. Use that time to explore what that next opportunity might look like. Whether it's a volunteer, whether it's reading, whether it's some sort of online class, don't sit and waste time. It's the one thing you can't get back, and it'll help you differentiate when you search for that first big job. Think about networking. It might be counterintuitive right now because the world's somewhat shut down. Don't let that stop you from continuing to network. Think about your uh, alumni friends, your, your student friends, your professors, your parents' friends, people you know that might know somebody that might know somebody, that works in the city, that might know the company that you're going after. I think you're going to find it. People are very, very uh, aware of the need to continue to meet and chat, and they're going to be there for you. So use your time wisely. You can't get it back. 
continue to network. And think about a couple other things, lessons I think I've learned. Hopefully they'll make a difference for you. Um, you can't control much right now, obviously, but there's one thing you can control, and that's what you think about when you get up every morning. And I can't tell you how many people I've met, they wake up on Monday, hoping it's Friday, and they string a bunch of those together. Or you can wake up and make it the most magnificent day of your life. I know that sounds a little corny, but it really, really is true. So you can decide to be anxious, you could decide to be average, or you can dare to be great, but you actually truly get to make that choice. You can't control much else, but you really can control that. Another piece of maybe advice I would give to maybe newer uh, students going into their first job, even if you've been out in the work world for a long time, so many people make it about themselves. It's all about me. I gotta tell you, if you really wanna differentiate, make it about everybody else. Make it about the people that you work with. Make the people around you better. Don't make it all about you. You will differentiate right out of the blocks if you think that way. There's a famous quote from Pat Summit, who was the, uh, she died a few years ago. She was the basketball coach at the University of Tennessee. And she said, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Think about that. It works every single time. And finally, I would, I would say, if you think about what really truly brings peace and happiness into your life, yeah, it's not the new job, it's not the new check, it's not the first car, it's not any of those, really. True peace and happiness comes from the quality of your relationships, starting with yourself. And I know that might not resonate with a 22-year-old or someone just getting out of college, but it really, really is true when you think about what's most important in your life, particularly right now. So, you know, the light's gonna go back on, the sun's coming out, America will, will, will be just fine, and so will you. And I think what's kind of cool, you're gonna be at the heart of what this new normal is going to look like. You're gonna have a front row seat at helping kind of create it. And I think you gotta look at that as an adventure and look at that with the curiosity it takes to win in that kind of environment. So. Uh, again, congratulations. Please remember, be positive, be kind, be curious, and most importantly, dare to be great. You can do it. I know you can. I'm so happy for all of you and your families. Uh, congratulations again, and go celebrate tonight and have some fun. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Cole and Mr. Ransom for sharing your message with our graduates and guests. We will now proceed with the conferral of the degrees. This is an important day for all of our graduates. Provost Coker. Today, a number of our undergraduates have received gold and white cords. Students who have achieved a 3.5 or higher cumulative grade point average were given these cords to signify their academic achievements. For our graduate students, a cumulative graduate grade point average of at least 3.0 is a minimum required to graduate. Many here today have GPAs well above that. We recognize this level of achievement of our graduate students. The degrees now to be conferred attest to the scholastic achievement of each student and represent the university's fulfillment of its educational mission. Will all graduating candidates please rise? Chancellor Levitt, these candidates have fulfilled all requirements for their degrees. We respectfully request that they be presented to receive the appropriate degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the University of Wisconsin System, I now confer upon the designated graduates the appropriate degrees with all privileges and responsibilities thereto pertaining. Provost Coker, will you please invite our graduates to receive a symbol of that degree? At this time, we are asking all graduate students and their friends and families to scroll down to the class of 2020 section on this commencement webpage. Find your student slide using the search bar and play the graduate's name at this time. Doctoral and master's graduates, we extend our congratulations. Associate and bachelor degree graduates may now move your tassels from the right side of your mortarboard to the left. Congratulations. Let me be the first to welcome our graduates as alumni of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. The completion of these degrees 
uh, and the achievement of the personal goals of our graduates did not happen without the support of a number of important people who are viewing today. I would like to invite the parents of our graduates in your homes to stand and be recognized. Spouses, partners, and children of our graduates made sacrifices to make this day possible. Well, spouses, partners, and children also stand to be recognized. In addition, grandparents also provided support and assistance. Will grandparents please stand and be recognized? Siblings of the graduates, please stand to be recognized. Aunts, uncles, other relatives, friends, and guests who are viewing today, please stand to be recognized. I would like to personally acknowledge a very special group of colleagues of both the university and our students, our faculty and staff. UW Oshkosh is fortunate to have world-class faculty and staff who have impacted the lives of our students during their time here and in the future. Please join me in thanking our outstanding faculty and staff. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh Alumni Association, Ms. Amanda Betts. Ms. Betts is a 2009 graduate of the College of Letters and Science at UW Oshkosh and is currently the Vice President of Brand Marketing at Randstad USA. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to the President of your Alumni Association, representing the University's nearly 100,000 alumni worldwide, Ms. Amanda Betts. Greetings, graduates, and congratulations. It is my distinct privilege and honor as your President of the Alumni Association to officially recognize each of you as new alumni of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. In that moment when you moved your tassels across your graduation cap, you became distinguished members of the UW Oshkosh Alumni Association, nearly 100,000 Titans strong worldwide. As a Titan and an alumna, I welcome you to our community of teachers, entrepreneurs, nurses, artists, social workers, designers, journalists, engineers, and the list goes on. This list is tremendous. And whatever the field and wherever they serve, and each Titan is a gracious, giving leader. Rest assured, starting today, wherever you go and wherever you continue to learn, work, serve, locally, nationally, globally, you will encounter Titans. Take time to celebrate one another and support one another. Today's pomp and pageantry will simply not be complete without observing one final tradition. As part of this ceremony, I'm pleased to induct you, our newest graduates, into the UW Oshkosh Alumni Association. To all the family members, friends, and guests with you today, if you happen to be an alumnus or an alumna of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, please stand and remain standing. Now new graduates and UW Oshkosh alumni, please join all others and stand. Chancellor Levitt, upon your recommendation, I am honored to extend UW Oshkosh Alumni Association memberships to all the graduates of the 2020 spring commencement. Now, new alumni, welcome from your fellow Titan alumni who now share with you our solemn commitment to maintain the excellence of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. Together, we shall provide ongoing support to the university in the years and decades ahead so that our alma mater can continue to provide exceptional education opportunities to the people of this region, state, nation, and world. We commit to strengthening the experiences that tested each of us and transformed each of us. Now, all fellow Titan alumni, on behalf of your alumni association, I once again extend to all of you my warmest congratulations. Give deeply of yourselves and join me in supporting in this incredible place that helped forge the remarkable futures ahead of you all. Thank you, Ms. Betts. I extend the most cordial invitation to our graduates to share their commencement slide from the website and any of their photos using our hashtag UWOGrad and hashtag move the tassel on social media to mark this moment in time. Now please join in the singing of our alma mater with the words on your screen. We now welcome back Michaela Marks to sing the UW Oshkosh alma mater. Sing with joy of all we share now. Sing with love for all. Sing of truth and cherish learning. Sing a joyous call. 
Graduates and guests, I hereby declare this 146th spring commencement of the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh adjourned.